All right, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. The Devil's Thorn. To be you, the lock is surrounded by a triple circle. Atreus, the Miller brothers, mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Great, honey. pages out of an old encyclopedia. Where all eyes size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. Honey. I couldn't have hoped for better. Honey. I couldn't have hoped for better. was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword. Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. 
Let's give them a helping hand. For Pete's sake, Emily! You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. Oh, yeah? So tell me what you're doing here. I'm just... I mean, I... Yeah, just like me. Probably, but I asked the question first. Well, then, we'll pretend you haven't asked me yet. What about a little gallantry, Louie? Come on, I'm listening. What are you doing here? Oh, I thought you'd have a bit more wit, sir. I am disappointed. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. It talks about it. Oh, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes. A fragment of amber. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Probably, but that doesn't mean they weren't stolen. But Mortimer's signature, it looks genuine. Maybe he erased the original ones and signed his name instead. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Mortimer's collection is unique, isn't it? That's an understatement. No doubt he has a major passion for history and fine art, or getting gifts. If each time Mortimer does someone a favor, they reward him with a priceless gift, that means he must have helped nearly everybody in the world. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? 
nothing. I have done absolutely nothing for you. No to this, no to that. You ask for proof of trust, but when you get it, you turn a deaf ear. You are defiant, evasive, and paranoid. Go question your own motives. I've done all I can. All right, fine. There's no point getting on your high horse, you know. So I'm wary, I grant you that. I'll admit, you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course. But what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture, and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Yes, it's perfectly clear. You're already working with someone. Ah, well spotted, Louis. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler? So, your partner is... Your sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh. Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes. You can't imagine to what extent, though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day, we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one. Then for the other, we dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir Holm and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, 
she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. It looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. Elizabeth, I don't know if it's about my mother again, but I'm telling you, you've nothing to be afraid of. She didn't come here for you. I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognize my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis, I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. She doesn't hesitate on her answers. She's not trembling. She's really convinced of what she's seen. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rock cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louie, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa. The alcohol's... <sighs> gone to my head. Here, the condemned's last drink. Man, I... I need to take it easy with the booze. At this rate, I won't last the night. Let's go easy on the drinking, okay? Alcohol won't solve our problems. Ugh, the second one isn't any easier. So, do you want to know why she did all those things to me or not? Even if it changes the image you have of her forever? What was she trying to cure you of then? Of the one illness she never managed to treat me for. Come on, Elizabeth. We have to finish what we started. I feel all dizzy. There must have been a reason. Just tell me. Tell me what my mother treated you for. She wanted to silence them. What? What are you talking about? Silence what? The voices. The voices in my head. They speak to me, Louis. They've always told me what to do. They say nasty things to me. Elizabeth, are, are you saying that, that spirits talk to you? You're right. Sometimes there are several voices. How did you know? No, listen, I, I don't know anything. I, I'm just repeating what you said. They want me. Want me just for themselves. They talk to me all the time. Yet your mother did everything to make them go away. Ever since I was little. And look at the result. It 
It's impossible, Mother. You spent your life trying to prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. Why punish this poor girl? Oh, shit. What has she done to you? Uh-oh, Louie. Are you starting to believe me? No, but... Sh Too bad it's all been for nothing. They're still there, you know. What do you mean? They're still talking to you? All the time. Despite everything Sarah put me through, I still hear them. And here I am on a lost island, knowing that no one knows me. And I find myself here at the exact same time as her. You see? You understand? You sense it too. I'm going to die here. I beg you, tell me you believe me. I'm here, Elizabeth. I'm right here with you. And I do believe you. Thank you, Louie. You know, despite what people might think, I'm not crazy. My God, Elizabeth, how is this possible? Welcome to my world, little Louie. Welcome to my life. Let's not rush into things. You have nothing to fear here. I'm with you. And anyway, my mother's gone missing. You're not in any danger. That's not what the voices say. Listen to me. Don't give up. You must resist. And tomorrow, you'll see. Things will be better. You like my little concoction, don't you? That's rare. What? It no longer has any effect on me, but my guests generally don't appreciate me mixing alcohol with laudanum. What? You put laudanum in my drink? In both. Don't worry, my little Louie. We'll sink down to the bottom together. Oh, man. I feel like puking. I really feel like shit. Uh, I gotta get back. Don't worry, Louie. I'm here now. I'll take good care of you. What is this bitch gonna do to me? Don't touch me! Just le- If I get up, I'll fall. Oh, little Louie's tired. Leave everything to me. May I come in? Ah, uh, my head. I shouldn't have drunk so much. Oh, shit. Times must I tell you, you must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. 
We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. It wasn't me. I, I, I didn't kill her. I, I'd much rather have met you under different circumstances. Lord Mortimer, believe me, I'm very conscious of the gravity of the situation. <sighs> Everything seems to point to me as the one who killed Elizabeth, but I swear I am innocent. Out of respect for your mother, rest assured that I do want to believe you. And all I want is to be able to prove it to you. When do we start? We already have. Tell me, Louis. How do you feel? I feel like a rat trapped in a maze. Interesting. I beg your pardon? Sarah also felt like she was trapped like an animal. Where are you going with this, my lord? Sarah's behavior grew odd before her disappearance. Her attitude changed, she became prey to outbursts of violence and a number of temporary absences. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't go getting lost like your mother did. You're not suggesting that I might have killed Elizabeth and that I don't remember, are you? I don't know, Louis. It's just that what with your mother and now you, it's rather a lot. The more I take stock of the situation, the more I'm under the impression that you've been set up but, before going any further, I must inform you that Sir Gregory is about to arrive. He is coming to question you about the murder of poor Elizabeth, whom he was very fond of. He is quite determined to find the culprit, whomever they may be. So, convince him of your innocence. Then we can continue this conversation. William. I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments. chance to look around. Carmelite water. open this chest.
Dante's purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. This is Thursday. Sit back down, Louis. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Monsieur de Richet, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? I was in the corridor and I was about to go to bed. Elizabeth appeared as from nowhere and rushed toward me. She took me by the arm and led me to her room. You say she led you? All right, we'll accept that. Continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? Well, she was terrorized by the fact that you invited her at the same time as my mother. She was surely victim to misconceptions, but felt trapped. She was convinced she was going to die. But why? Let's say she didn't believe in coincidences, shall we? You'll admit that the chances of my mother and Elizabeth bumping into each other on this island are pretty slim. Sorry if I'm putting my nose where it doesn't belong, my lord, but why did you invite them at the same time? Elizabeth spoke to you about her past. She came here so you could help her fight her demons. She must have told you about her encounters with my mother. Remember, Louis, I was not the one who invited dear Elizabeth. Indeed, it was me. And you seem to forget it was you that we found right next to poor Elizabeth's body. You had better start proving your innocence rather than trying to cast doubts on William here. And what happened next? Then she told me she had poured laudanum in my glass. The next minute I was on the floor. When I woke up, she was lying in a pool of blood. That is all you had to say? You expect us to believe that you have no idea what happened to her? Yes, because I'm telling you the truth. How can you possibly expect us to believe you? Gregory, we must consider every possibility. Louis, do you have any idea who could have done it? Judging by the situation, I'm at the top of your list of suspects. William gave you every opportunity to shift suspicion onto someone else. You have a very strange method of defending yourself, young man. So, Louis, what would your motive be? Well, given the abuse my mother inflicted on the young woman, I, I might have wanted to protect her reputation and tried to hush it up by getting rid of the only witness. That makes sense. But thinking about it, it also makes your mother the ideal suspect. And since us suspecting you is not the best form of defense, do you want to try again? 
Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit... ...the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis. Unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen, if you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By do stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't what? you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. I might not have the strength of Hercules, but if I had stabbed a woman, I'd probably have made deeper cuts. Sounds plausible. I have to admit, you put forward a powerful argument, Monsieur de Richet. I think that will be all, Gregory. The benefit of the doubt suffices. I would like to thank you for helping us shed light on what happened last night. To be honest, you are not the only suspect. I'm prepared to believe you were drugged. Our poor Elizabeth hid the stuff everywhere, and I could smell laudanum on you three yards away. So you knew it wasn't me from the start? We weren't sure. Louis, I am sorry, but everything points in the same direction. I only know one person on this island who might have had a big enough grudge against Elizabeth, who has no alibi, and whose behavior is, well, suspect. Not to mention dangerous. Tell me what happened before my arrival. I think I've been patient enough. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What, what do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. Mm, that doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. 
It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris. We were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? He was called Von Brebe, if I remember rightly. Does that ring a bell? No. Not in the slightest. Sorry. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? I'd like to find a logical answer, but I just can't see anything. Apart from the fact that she might have lost her mind. Since I came here, I've ceased to understand her. That, plus what I've found out about her past, and I'm left with the bitter feeling that I never really knew her. Hmm. I can understand you beginning to feel that way after these past two days, but I'm sure all will become clear once your mother reappears. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. Tell me. Tell me about her disappearance. Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. 